succeed, ultimately just persevered, didn't give up, and didn't take no for an, uh, an answer. Of course, there are many other factors. It gets complicated, I understand that. But I think one thing is you just have to keep going. Uh, a role in Sierra at the company came open. Sierra seemed fascinating, interesting to me. Seemed like something I would want to do. And uh, literally started from the bottom, and now we're here. What one advice would you like to sort of give to all the women out there who are planning or let's say dreaming to start something of their own? Just do it. I know that that picture looks different for everyone, but just freaking do it. Mm -hmm. Once I made that choice and knew I was gonna stick to it, and I was like, okay, this is it. Like, I am doing the thing run with it. I like control. I like predictability. I like to know what's going to happen. I have also tried to appreciate the randomness and the unpredictability and just be okay living with that. And I'm getting better. <laughs> take take the risk uh, and step up to the plate, especially if you're in a room or a company or an industry full of, of males mostly. Got to put yourself out there. And I've found it every time to be worth it. Lean on your network, ask for, for help. People are amazing. They're very generous. Uh, and so I, I appreciate that so much. And you know, then you try and give it back to others too. I do love chatting with people. If you're listening, feel free to reach out because I am passionate about these topics. Welcome to another episode of the Women in CRO series by We WO Podcast. This series is an ode to the contribution of women in the CRO industry. Before we speak to our special guest for this episode, Here's a quick summary of who we are and what we do. VWO is a leading experience optimization platform that helps fast-growing brands optimize their digital experiences. Using our latest product, VWO Insights, you can understand user journeys and identify conversion roadblocks on your website and mobile app. So, without any further delay, let's jump right into the conversation. Hi, everyone. Uh on today's episode, we have a very special guest who has been a source of inspiration for many, particularly women, encouraging them to pursue their passions fearlessly. Please welcome Heli Carpenter, the founder of Chirpy. Heli specializes in user research, experimentation, and client relations. Having worked with leading organizations in the CRO industry, she is determined to break the mold, think outside the box, smash boxes, and hash out whatever it takes to run Chirpy a top-notch business, offering CRO consulting, execution, and training. Visit mychopi.com to know more about her amazing work. Hi, Heli. Welcome to this Women in CRO podcast. How are you doing today? I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for taking your time out. I really appreciate you accepting this invite for us and sort of taking your valuable time and speaking today with us. Thank you so much for that. Oh, of course. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. So I quickly wanted to know, we are already in 2024, right? So how is this year going so far for you? Anything interesting that you would like to share with our audience? I am having a great 2024 so far. I wrapped up some amazing engagements in the back half of last year with Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruise Lines, okay. and then rolled into a brand new engagement immediately at the beginning of January, which I can't share the name of, but it is awesome as well. So yeah, I have no complaints so far. That's so good to hear. As in, I think you recently completed one year as well, right? I was just going through your LinkedIn and I noticed that you have just completed one year with Chopi. So first of all, congratulations for that. And it's so good to see that you are already collaborating with different brands all together. I am really curious whenever you want to reveal it in the future, I'll just follow your LinkedIn and try to see <laughs> which brands you're talking about right now. But thank you so much for letting us know that. And I hope all like complete year goes well for you even better for that matter right <laughs> so uh let's talk about your journey then so could you please let uh, help our audience know like is it is this something you always wanted to uh, wanted to do from your childhood or this is something randomly happened like how your journey looked like because as a child i remember that i never wanted to be in this journey uh, in this segment that i am doing right uh, right now right i always wanted to be a doctor but when i grew up i realized no man i cannot read that much right 
in in medical you have to study a lot and i cannot study that much right so anything that you wanted to pursue and then you landed to the cro journey and thought that hey let's start something of my own so would you like to sort of introduce your journey to our audience this is one of my favorite questions okay. so i have a modified version i didn't know what i wanted to do but it came later than childhood so i went through college didn't have anything particular in mind as i think is true for most 18 year olds these days uh so i really just landed into this industry by accident that was random a little bit which i can explain but once i got into it and into cro specifically i knew immediately that i wanted to go out on my own and that's okay. what i was going to seek out to do every step of the way so I landed in this on accident, though, my senior year of college. It was, I think, uh, February or March. Graduation was in May. And I knew that I wanted some type of job, part time, through the end of school, extra money's nice. If it <laughs> happened to lead me into something full time at the end of graduation, amazing. So. I just went on the internet, as people do, looking for gigs, found an exec admin assistant role that was open locally at a PPC agency. I had never heard of PPC in my life. I did not know about digital marketing. I, I knew absolutely nothing. But I got an interview, Googled all the terms before my interview, Googled all the things, tried to learn as much as I could, ended up getting that job started part-time as an exec admin assistant in March of okay. that year. Uh, and then that really started me on my journey. So after I graduated college, I didn't want to be an exec admin. Uh, I wanted something full-time. And ultimately, CRO, uh, a role in CRO at the company, came open. PPC was never my jam. I was never interested in that, which is what the agency primarily was. But uh, they had a CRO lane. So job came open. CRO seemed fascinating, interesting to me. Seemed like something I would want to do. Got a coordinator role and uh, literally started from the bottom. And now we're here. So uh, worked my way up as high as I wanted to at that company. Uh, had my sights the whole time, like I said, from day one of starting that there, knew I wanted to work for myself, had my sights set on working at CXL Agency while I was at Hannapin, like essentially uh, that was, I, I knew that from day one as well, uh, because there are differences in what, what uh, the agency I was at offered versus CXL. So ultimately went to CXL, knew the titles and everything that I wanted there and uh, always had a path at least a step if not two ahead trying to curate specific skills specific experiences even trying to curate experience at different types of companies so then ultimately ended up at optimizely worked okay. through uh roles there and then in january of last year decided it was time to go out on my own and so now we're here <laughs> That's a good to hear. First of all, round of applause for your journey as it's, in, it's very inspiring because many of us, I feel that when we think of starting something of our own, uh, right? So it many of have some sort of a blockage in our head, right? So whether it will succeed, I will fail or I will succeed and stuff like that. But taking that risk, right? Experimenting with your life is what <laughs> makes sense, right? Because we, we, we are never sure what we uh, what will come to us till the time we are not experimenting with our life, right? So round of applause for you taking that risk and then completing this one year with Chopi. So that's so good to hear. And I'm, I'm sure that all the audiences that are sort of viewing and listening to our podcast today will get some sort of inspiration from you. And they will also sort of think if, if they want to start something of their own and they can make their uh, mind towards that. So thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, uh, Haley. I really appreciate it. Now, uh, as we already discussed that Chopi has completed one year already, I was going through your post and I saw that you mentioned somewhere that someone told you that year one is all about not quitting, right? Uh, it's really fascinating how impactful words can be on our lives, correct? 
so i just wanted to know uh, uh if if there are any sort of philosophies or principles that you live by or that have actually shaped your life right which you would like to share with our audience today that can actually help them uh, get inspired more from you oh i have so many i uh, <laughs> actually yeah i get really inspired by words i yeah. definitely choose uh what i intake and digest very mm -hmm. carefully versus what i shut out mm -hmm. which can be a struggle sometimes a fun fact uh i i think part of what got me to a headspace to start on the journey was actually a personal endeavor which started with sober october in 2022 i did a whole month of that mm -hmm. that got me into seriously doing yoga this this circles back i promise into seriously doing yoga for about a year which okay. obviously part of yoga uh, is the mindset your mental space energy all of all the things like that and so i did a lot of thinking around what i was feeling and learning and hearing in yoga and uh this is maybe the fun fact where i ultimately put a mini like small whiteboard Okay. on my refrigerator uh -huh. and all of last year would curate sayings and words of wisdom on that whiteboard i think i ended the year with probably i don't know 15 sayings on the end on the board which i took a picture of and then wiped it clean for this year mm -hmm. uh but but a lot of those did help me and then definitely talking to people so like the one about year one isn't quitting that came from my dear friend sarah Edie. shout out if she sees this i actually met her at the spring conference through the platform winter last year here in austin we've become good buddies uh and she does similar things she's a consultant as well and she told me that year one is about not quitting and so that was my goal for the year i had started out ambitiously of course you have a revenue number you would like to hit and other things but some days it is just damn hard and you're like what am i doing and so i wrote that on my wall also i went i came home i wrote that on a giant sticky note taped it on my wall and uh remembered that all year so i think that probably applies even this year, hopefully not in year three, <laughs> that wouldn't <laughs> apply anymore. I'm not thinking about quitting, but no, no. Uh, <laughs> there there are some days of stuff. So that's a really good one. Yeah. I was also really inspired by Rachel Hollis's podcast. I heard an episode, uh, this was also early last year, I believe, where she was talking about in business, mm -hmm. similar vein of thought that it's about not quitting, where people that succeed ultimately just persevered, didn't give up and didn't take no for uh, an answer. And so I think the people, of course, there are many other factors. It gets complicated. I understand that. But I think one thing is you just have to keep going. Uh, yeah. There is a conversation I would say to have there around how much runway you give yourself when you start a business. I'll say, People had always told me, give me, give yourself more runway than you anticipate that you will need. That is true. I was like, no, I'm going to, you know, I don't need more runway. I'm going to be fine, but it gives yourself more runway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those, those were good ones. And then um, I can't remember the exact phrasing of this, but one thing from yoga was that uh, randomness is a gift or um, I think it was like, enjoy the mysteriousness of randomness, something okay. like that. Cause okay. I'm very much a, I like control. I like predictability. I like to know what's gonna happen. That is uh, far from the reality of owning a business, I think. And so <laughs> that gets to me sometimes, it got to me a lot last year. So I have also tried to appreciate the randomness and the unpredictability and just be okay living with that and i'm getting better <laughs> that's a good to hear because uh we all have someone in our lives who keeps you motivating right and i i totally believe that the words actually impacts us a lot and we can actually shape our life so 
I have also come up with different people who have actually shaped my life where I am today. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. And I hope audiences who are seeing this and uh, listening to this podcast should able to get what you are trying to tell them and uh, should abide to the sayings that you are sort of following and achieving all your goals altogether, right? Uh, I'm curious to know how Chopi, like why Chopi, as in your brand name. It's very fascinating, to be honest, uh, with respect to CRO industry. So what does this mean exactly with respect to your business and how this uh, brand name uh, you decided, like why Chopi you decided? Hmm. Good question. So this is not a diss on any other agency, no one else in the industry. It is just my lane for me. And uh, but how I came up with it is I wanted to stand out. I wanted to be different, but I also wanted it to be memorable and fun and not jargony and not boring. So. I was like, I don't want it to be CRO, blah, 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 conversion rate, blah, 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 conversion, blah, 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 you know, all of those types of things. Yes. I don't want typical agency brandy type color, brandy, I don't know, branding colors. Um, I just, I want to be different. I want it to reflect me as a person, what I stand for, what I try and be, uh, which is hopefully fun and <laughs> uplifting and, and lighter uh, and, um, so yeah, I, I wanted something different, which then led me to this this lane of kind of one word, buzzy, fun names, because I did want a one word name. Uh, and then ultimately just landed on Chirpy. It took me a while to get used to saying it because I was like, is this stupid? Like, people are <laughs> going to be saying Chirpy in calls. Like, is that weird? And it was weird at first, but you know, I was like, I was stuck to my guns and I kept it. And I was like, this is what we're doing. Uh, and then, you know, same thing with the colors, fun, different, bright. And uh, same with, uh, you know, font choices, ev everything. So I've heard good, good feedback on it. I think it's landing and resonating and um, sticking out, which was the goal, which has been good. So I think personally, it, you have achieved your goal, what you wanted. So basically, Yay. it should be funny. It should be fascinating. It should actually be boring and stuff. Because Chopi as a brand name actually catch my eye and I was actually looking forward to it. What is Chirpy? Like why Chirpy, right? So I when before this podcast, I thought that this is going to be my first question whenever we start talking about Chirpy. Like why Chirpy? <laughs> because it's, it's, very, it's a very cool name to be very honest and it yeah. can resonate in a much better way. So it's, it's very refreshing and uh, very cool to be honest. <gasps> Thank so. you. Yeah, I also wanted it to be memorable because there's just so many similar names out there and CRO and acronyms and so on and so forth. And so I wanted something sticky and uh, something where they, even if they didn't remember what Trippy was or who I was like, Trippy. Oh, yeah. What was it like? You know what I mean? They would have it in there. So. Oh, and yeah, as already mentioned, your background is really cool. So <laughs> I'm good to see that. Yeah. Now, uh, I would also like to understand. So while building your brand, your own brand, um, have you come across any teams or any clients for that matter who are not convinced with the ideas or let's say the CRO strategies that you suggest, right? And if yes, then how do you deal with these kind of clients? Always. <laughs> there yes. are always disagreements in CRO for a variety of reasons it kind of depends on the reason mm -hmm. uh but i think one i'll preface it by saying i'm not uh scared of those conversations it's something that i've worked really hard at in my consulting skills and practicing skills to be able to gracefully handle conversations like this don't get me wrong i have failed many times along the way and no one's perfect so i you know i still have things that i want to do better every single day especially with these types of conversations but um i think one of the biggest things is first and foremost like understanding the pushback 
because sometimes it's just, or oftentimes actually, it's just a matter of maybe misunderstanding or a knowledge gap or something like that. So then if you can teach someone or explain something, oftentimes that will clear it up pretty yes. quickly. Uh, and especially in the CRO world, things are very technical. They are very in the weeds. There's a lot of things to know. It's multidisciplinary, a lot of terms. So I, I really think like knowledge is a big one. And second to that, trying to bring people along with you and not trying to impress them by sounding overly complicated, over complex, throwing out a bunch of fancy words and sounding, um, you know, pretentious or like, that's definitely a strategy I've seen some people have. I don't think it works well. It's not my approach. So with that said, um, there are certain topics that I'm very uh, strongly opinionated about that if someone disagrees, I will not flex on my stance for whatever reasons I have. Sometimes you just agree to disagree. Sure. And especially as an outside party working with an in-house team, there's only so much you can do. Um, so sometimes you agree to disagree. Sometimes part of the conversation, especially from a consulting side, is offering up your recommendations, your solutions, your explanations, and then letting them decide what to do and saying, you know, you can can choose the path here. Most importantly, just choose one. <laughs> have have a decision made first and foremost. Um, and and then you know you can get into the nuance. But um, you know, like I said, usually you can come to some kind of middle ground or resolution. And someone, another phrase that someone told me once is have strong opinions held weekly. That was Matt Beichel that told me that. So shout out. Uh, so, you know, with that said, I'm, I'm opinionated. I'm a strong personality. I've worked hard to show up to the table in a particular way. However, I'm not afraid to say I'm wrong or, or flex on things either. So, you know, sometimes I'll go to their side and that's fine too. Uh, but I think, you know, just discussing, being willing to have, have discussions, I think debates, that sounds too harsh <laughs> in this case, but just, just being open-minded and, and figuring things out is important. So long-winded answer no but uh it's it's i also believe the same because uh as you clearly uh, as you rightly mentioned that you have agreed to disagree which is absolutely a great advice right and uh, i think all the individuals uh should actually abide to this because many a times as an individual people are not sort of they, they, they do not think that they should agree uh, disagree to a certain thing because of their let's say they do not want to do so or they are too much like too much in in their selves that they feel that hey what i am saying is always right which cannot happen right so yeah definitely a very good point uh, and uh, so while discussing or while connecting to your clients uh before you see that hey the client is not sort of agreeing to what you are saying what are the first few conversation that you want to have with them right or let's say what are the conversation which takes to you to understand or way which which actually helps you understand that hey this client is not agreeing to what i'm saying and then you follow all the steps or follow, or follow all the agenda and everything that you mentioned earlier so what kind of conversation you begin with uh, with with the for, uh, during the first conversation uh, with any client. Mm. Yeah, good question. So I think one of the first things that I'm cognizant of is that if you do disagree, or if they disagree, or you feel there's pushback somewhere, mm -hmm. is not to come at someone or a team as accusatory or defensive or calling them out. It's simply just, I want to understand, I just want to dive a little bit deeper, get some more perspective and context on this, because I have absolutely been wrong in my interpretation of a of pushback from teams or um, decisions of teams, which commonly happens when done in writing. A lot of teams communicate in Slack, I'd say, oftentimes for situations like this, in-person 
calls are great because that communication often turns out differently. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, having that discovery angle and then pivoting and going off from there as you need to. Uh, and so if it is just a knowledge gap situation, talking them through that, again, not as a at in a degrading accusatory looking down type of way but just i want to walk alongside we want to be on the same page and um you know i just i want to be helpful type of angle uh and then you know sometimes i would say on the other end of the spectrum things escalate maybe not in an aggressive or harsh type way mm -hmm. but you know, I would say sometimes at the beginning or often at the beginning, if there's a spectrum of uh, the starting point and the end point, and let's say that end point is where it kind of gets not aggressive, but you're not making progress, that beginning point, you usually start with a little bit more honey. Mm -hmm. And if that's not landing and things aren't resonating and you're not getting to the right place or you're not agreeing to disagree for whatever reason and you still just need to get something across to get something done, you got to take some of that honey away a little bit sometimes. And that's where you sometimes just need to be a little bit more direct, not sugarcoat something and just be very to the point, maybe even a little bit blunt seeming. There's nuance to this. Don't just go out and try that. Uh, <laughs> in every situation, you can get yourself into trouble. But sometimes that's necessary too. Uh, and I would say, especially as a female, a lot of these things that I'm saying, I would say are some of the hardest things to do, skills to develop, skills to practice. There's a lot more intertwined, I think, as a woman for, for these skills and some of these client-facing situations. And I'm certainly not saying I have it all figured out and I'm perfect. It has been very much a work in progress over every year that I've done this job. Uh, but even things like therapy, <laughs> And, um, you know, crying on the other end of the line and figuring out next time, like there's a lot of behind the scenes that goes into it. But, um, you know, if there are people that this, you know, you get scared or anxious or whatever, like just don't give up. Just keep trying. I had someone tell me once that you're, you're not going to go to jail, you know, if someone gets mad at you or if you screw up too badly, uh, it might not have the best outcome that you wanted. Or, uh, you know, it, it might not be ideal, but you're probably not going to jail. So <laughs> that helped me for the first like year or two of working. <laughs> I think that was uh, Sam Kerr. Shout out to her if she's listening. That's a cool. Uh, definitely. So rightly said, you're not going to the jail. So <laughs> explore as much as you want. Be upfront whatever you want to say. Just, just say it out loud. And yeah, uh, because... I, I strongly believe that we all make mistakes and we all sort of learn from our mistakes, right? Because till that time we don't make such mistakes, we will not understand what we are doing wrong, right? Because every time we cannot yes. be right, correct? Have so, to be able to make, ha have to be open to failing, yes. have to be open to putting your ego aside, which is really hard sometimes, even for me. Uh, <laughs> people that have worked with me, I'm sure know this, uh, but it's something I had to work on. And uh, I, I like the saying of fail forward. So we're going to fail for sure. But just make sure that you're going forward, that you learn something, that you can try and improve something. I'd say also, especially to women out there, there is absolutely an element of what seems like risk taking. You have to be willing to take risks, small and big. So let's say there's an opportunity. Let's say you're on an account team or an in-house team mm -hmm. and you are presenting a particular a, a potentially controversial or um oh debatable or less than ideal results or topic or something like something that won't just be like an easy breezy topic of conversation let's say your boss asks you hey susie do you want to try and present this in the board meeting great learning opportunity or i would love to see you try and do this or something mm -hmm. There's a choice there that I've seen some people make where you say no because it's scary, anxiety producing. You're probably going to lose some sleep over it. Uh, you know, it's 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 a little bit of a risk. It could go really badly. Sure, then there are other people 
who are like, yeah, absolutely. Heck yeah. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to prep. I'm going to do everything that I can. I know it still could turn out badly, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I'm willing to do it and put myself out there. And uh, I would say, I guess this is more of just uh, my hope for, for people because I don't think there's enough talk about it is that go for it you know take take the risk yes. uh and step up to the plate especially if you're in a room or a company or an industry full of of males mostly got to put yourself out there and i've found it every time to be worth it no through that because uh till the time you don't take risk you you will not be able to understand how much capable you are right so Another yeah. say, another say, this one is from <laughs> Elena Verna, shout out to her. I read in one of her posts once that if it's between you and a man for a task, the man will be much more likely to volunteer, probably. And, you know, he might even only have 50% of the capability and the qualifications to do that task. Mm -hmm. But he's going to raise his hand as if he's at 100%. The woman will be too scared to even consider raising her hand if she is not at 100 at that moment. And Elena's post, I believe I'm quoting this correctly, was um, a woman will be, let's say, three times more prepared than the man. And she just doesn't know it. But she didn't raise her hand because she wasn't at 100. So the man got it and he wasn't even as prepared. So it's like always raise your hand. Always step up. Because at least in the conversation relative to males, like you're going to be prepared. I promise. Like, just do it. <laughs> just no, do it. That. Because uh, take risks, um, see your capability. And I also believe that all the opportunities that you get as a woman, uh, I will talk about myself here because I never say no to any opportunity because it actually helped me shape my life right so as per my wish i might fail anyone can fail right but every time each and every time that we are taking a risk or we are saying yes to an opportunity we are sort of learning something from that one right and we are improving to the next opportunity that we are getting so yeah and no. every time you do it you prove yes. to yourself you can do it and i think that's one of the biggest things is proving to yourself and then the more you prove it to yourself and the more you have the experience, anyone that tries to doubt you, tell you tells you you can't, it's whatever true. it is, you can be like, you know, you. <laughs> I've got this. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. can't tell me what I can and can't do. I'll show you and make my own freaking seat, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, every time that you meet some new clients or let's say the team of the client uh, team members who are not aware of CRO, right? What is CRO? Because I have met many people in the industry, like different industries that who are who are not aware of CRO only, right? So what are the biggest misconceptions you have found out with respect to CRO that people have currently? Hmm. So many. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Uh, one is that it just applies to marketing, which mm -hmm. is so far from the truth. Yes. So part of trainings that I run is explaining this concept in detail with visuals about how it usually starts in marketing, mm -hmm. how it then goes over to product and how it can be extrapolated out to other teams and the ROI associated with that uh, and the different options you have there. But that's one. Uh, I think another one is i would say this more from a perspective of talking to people outside the industry like family friends They're like oh so you're in it then or like <laughs> you work on hardware or something like they just you run ads and you're just sometimes no matter how much i explain it it, it just takes a while to land for people outside the industry which is super fair because it is you know complicated but i i have improved my my layman uh explanation of it over the years do you, do you would you mind sharing it with the audience as well so that someone trying to build something in CRO they, they should be aware what is the layman explanation to this so that they yeah. can their family understand about this so the the explanation that has landed for me recently is let's say a business has a website or a mobile app because those are the most common things that people interact with every single day so let's say you have a website and you're trying to buy a product on that website from a business 
what I do is make it easier for you to buy that online, a better experience for you, um, but not just you, everyone, which then makes the business more money over time. So I help the business make more money from their digital experiences, whether it be the website, app, whatever. Um, the second piece that I add is because a lot of people you'll say, like, oh, you know, the Google ads that you see that are sponsored or the Facebook ads, things like that. I'll be like, I don't do that. <laughs> I do not do that. I do not like those. Uh, and I was like, I, you know, a business wants as many people to see them and interact with them as possible. Right. And be like, yes. Be like, okay, well, I don't bring people to you. I don't like that shit. Uh, but I better convert more of the people that you do have on your website or your app or whatever it is. So to get more transactions out of those existing people, for example, and usually that combination of explanation lands. Works. They might still think, they might still be like, oh, well, so then it's IT or whatever. But they just like conceptually don't know the difference. But it's, I'm like, it's fine. You at least <laughs> kind of get what I do. So. No, very cool. That's not good to hear. I, will, I am going to use this explanation to explain my family members because honestly, they also juggle in between. What do you do? You are in marketing, IT. What do you do? Which company? Oh, yeah, marketing is one. What, what does VW do? They, I'm not able to help them understand only what VW does. Right. So definitely, I'm going to use your explanation. Thank you so much for that. Um, as a woman, I want to hear from you being an, an uh, entrepreneur. What one advice would you want, like, would you like to sort of give to all the women out there who are planning or let's say dreaming to start something of their own? Okay, one advice. Oh, so many. Uh, first and foremost, just do it. I know that that picture looks different for everyone depending on your life circumstances um, and what you're able to do and not do right away. But just freaking do it. <laughs> and I will say that making that actual choice was probably the hardest thing that I've done so far relative to this entire journey. Mm -hmm. Once I made that choice and knew I was going to stick to it, and I was like, okay, this is it. Like, I am doing the thing. Then you just run with it. But I think that was the hardest point of getting, of, 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 getting to it was um, the decision. So, you know, decide. And then sometimes people start part-time and do things on the side, keep yes. your full-time gig, totally understandable. You don't even have to, to aim big as a side hustle on the side to start, like do one thing. It doesn't even have to be recurring, do a project and prove mm -hmm. to yourself that you can do it. Cause the more you do too, the more you prove to yourself, you're like, oh, God, this. Um, but you know, do that or, in my case, I was able to just start full blown, um, grateful for my circumstances. And I was able to just jump ship and go, go a hundred percent and, um, feet first, I guess is what they say into it. But I think just make the choice. And I, th I think people are so much more capable than they give themselves credit for. Uh, one, one tip though, I've had a couple people ask me about some topics related to, to starting or what the beginning stages of a business look like. I am only a year in. So know that I am, you know, I have not exited three times. I am well aware that I am new to this too, but um, just from my conversations, know that if you do decide to do it, whether you just want to be the solopreneur or you want to grow a big team, that you do have to run the business in addition to the actual work, which yes. may seem obvious, but I think some people are surprised by what that entails. So before you jump into it, I would say also do some research, talk to people, make sure you fully understand the numbers, run your numbers in your personal life, how that's going to stack up to the business, what you need to bring in. I would say this is more if you're going, you know, full, for the full time option. Um, but understand the numbers, understand what you're getting into, because I've had some people be like, you know, is it HR, sales, marketing, finance, all the things? And you're like, yes, yes, it is all of the things. That is you. 
and you're running the account works or whatever your technical the actual work is uh, um so i love that it's not everyone's cup of tea mm -hmm. there are of course options like you can outsource hire hire people or vendors or whatever um but i always just like oh i just like feel so bad when people get into into it and they just like don't realize beforehand what what it is uh and and some people don't run the numbers either surprisingly before they jump in and i'm like okay i don't know how how you're gonna how that happened run the numbers that that would be another thing no uh that's absolutely correct because uh i have been in touch with different founders uh and they have the same advice because you are going to be hr you are going to be technical head you are going to be everything in your company right when you start your company and you have to run through through, through the numbers so it's the most crucial thing that we have to follow but as you mentioned heli that when when you thought of starting chopi you thought and you were like let's go ahead let's not wait for anything like i am sure that there must be someone in the family friends who have supported you in that decision right so would you like to sort oh. of mention them on this podcast to give them give them a shout out that they have actually helped you and sort of supported you that time and then you are here with chopi completing one year oh this is a good question so there have been so many people who have supported me. My husband is absolutely number one. Uh, okay. And my dad has helped me a ton. Stepmom, mm -hmm. stepdad, mom support, um, other family. Like, yes. However, and then, of course, other people in the industry and friends. Like, so many people that it would not be possible without this help and guidance and the willingness of people to give their time information trust um so there's definitely that i do want to say though i actually gave this suggestion to someone a couple months ago when i decided to go out on my own and i had made that choice i did not share that with a soul other than my spouse okay until i was already doing the work until i was already out on my own till i had already quit my full-time job mm -hmm. because <laughs> there is a large possibility that even your family friends whoever will shit on your dreams and talk you out of it for whatever intent maybe they're projecting maybe it's legitimate concern whatever just don't tell anyone <laughs> unless it's like, you know, a really close circle of people, unless you know for sure they're going to be team you and mm -hmm. support your choice. Like, don't even, I, I was telling someone I talked to, don't even tell your parents until you've already started the thing. Uh, and then what happens is then they're on board. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or if you accidentally tell someone before and they, they are not on board, then you start it you get things rolling and then they come around and they're like, Oh my gosh. Yay. <laughs> like, okay. Um, but, but yeah, you also, you know, with that said, lean on your network, ask for, for help. Uh, people are amazing. They're very generous. Uh, and so I, I appreciate that so much. And, you know, then you try and give it back to others too. Thank you so much for sharing this, uh, Heli, because you have been very candid so far, right? So I really appreciate the way you speak each and everything about your journey, how you failed, how you not quit it the last year and how you have sort of started this journey and stuff. Thank you so much. But before wrapping up the first segment uh, about your journey, uh, I have a last question where I want to understand from you if you have any sort of message for women facing challenges in pursuing big dreams for that matter and excelling in what they believe or what sort of careers they want to be in currently right any words of enc encouragement or advice if you'd like to uh just tell them oh aside from everything i've said already um genuinely i think the biggest advice is find a core group of people like i think the thing is like the top five closest people around you should be very intentional and you know positive uplifting whatever you want them to be 
and they will influence you most. Don't don't get upset if I misquote that, but it's something to that of like the top five people. Um, but even around that, so I think about that all the time on a personal level, professionally, and then when you have that, I would say pick some podcasts that inspire you and give you some direction. Pick books that inspire you and give you direction. Talk to people because genuinely I know I have all these sayings and things that I have spit out here, but, and, and it might seem silly, but like truly I have, have taken action and made life choices based on these inspirations and things that I've learned and people that I've talked to. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in some cases, maybe a lot of the cases, that was the stuff that helped me overcome blockers and barriers and uncertainties, doubts. Uh, and yeah, I just, I think exposure to certain things and knowing what's possible, learning things maybe aren't as scary as they seem or whatever, like, yeah, just, just allow, allow things to inspire you and, and come into you, but also seek them out, you know, keep your, keep your eyes open too. Um, oh, also make a dream board. This is my last one. Probably I have a dream board. I'm staring on it right now. I started every single day. I've made a dream board for years. It sounds ridiculous. If you've never made a dream board, please make one. It's still early in the year. Um, but that, that is so real. Like, I'm not even kidding you over the years. Like I will put things on my dream board. So many have come true. I have, I take things off and they come true. Stacks of things that have happened. Um, so make a dream. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just, you know, write it down, stick it on the wall, cut it out of magazines. But, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, Heli, for sharing this wise advice to our audiences. I am hopeful and I am just, just praying that all the women out there who are sort of aspiring and wanting to start something of their own should get inspired from you and, just just go ahead with their dreams, right? They should not think twice to sort of start and just just go ahead with whatever they want to pursue, right? Life is short. Thank you, <laughs> yes, thank you so much for your candid response uh, on all the questions that we currently had, uh, dis we currently was discussing uh, during this conversation. Now moving on to our next segment is going to be a very fun segment. So it's a rapid fire round. Rules are very simple. Uh, you have to quickly answer the questions, right? No pauses, no uh, breaks, or like no, no thinking around it. Just, just spit it out, whatever comes to your mind, right? Okay. <laughs> Gear yourself up. So, are you ready? Yeah. Cool. So, first question: Three apps that you can't live without. Oh, uh, Runkeeper. Okay. Spotify. Google Calendar. Great. One thing that you would like to change about the CRO industry? Get everyone on the same foundational level so that we can take it up from there as a group. Great one. What's the most random fact that you know by heart? About myself or just like life in general? Life in general. So I, I'm growing a Monstera plant. Mm -hmm. And if you have holes in the leaves like Swiss cheese, that's okay. a plant flex. It's called double fenestration, I think. And I was told that that's a big deal if you have a Monstera plant. Okay. I'm not aware of this. It's cool. okay. It's a plant nerd thing. Yeah. I was very excited about it though. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's cool. I'll, I'll definitely search about it after this uh, session. <laughs> Your guilty pleasure TV show or movie? Oh, what would you even call them? I call them like trash TV shows. But, okay. you know, Love is Blind, Too Hot to Handle, Love Island. That's like a guilty pleasure. I'm not proud of it, but it's, yeah. So I'll have to say high fives because these are some of my guilty pleasures as well. <laughs> Too Hot to yeah. Handle and Love is Blind. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a podcast, who is the first person that you would invite on the show? If it was a work podcast, I would do Bazoma St. John. I have followed her for a couple of years and I find her so inspirational. I would love to talk to her. Okay. And if it's a personal one, as in like not a professional podcast? 
I'm very into cooking and the food world and food shows and things like that. YouTube, Food Network, it's like what I grew up on. So mm -hmm. honestly, any any chef like Dave Chang, um, Emerald, Bobby Let's Flay, Josh Weissman, Sam the Cooking Guy, like you name it, would love to talk to them. That's so cool. And three books that you would recommend to our listeners. Hmm. Untamed, Believe It, mm -hmm. How to Do the Work, Glennon Doyle, Jamie Lee, uh, Kern Lima, and um, Nicole Lapera. Okay, great. What is one superpower that you would like to have? Mm. I don't know if this is a good thing, but um, being able to flip off my brain or at least my anxiety, that would okay. be nice. Okay. <laughs> you just intentionally do that. <laughs> Maybe while watching Love is Blinded Too Hot to Handle, you know, <laughs> right before. <laughs> can't, can't agree more. Uh, one thing that you are tired of explaining to your boss or client. Oh, like right now, client, because you the have value no of CRO. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> great. So that's it, Heli, from uh, my end. Thank you so much for your time today. It was lovely, lovely having a conversation with you. It was very candid with you, and you really being a spot and just answered every questions like this. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you taking the time out for us and speaking to us today. Before wrapping up this uh, podcast, any questions or anything that you would like to sort of uh, tell us uh, or our audiences for that matter uh, before sort of wrapping it up? I don't think I have anything else. However, I do love chatting to people. Feel free to DM me on LinkedIn, email me, Haley at mytherapy.com. If you have questions, you want to chat about things that I mentioned here, like if you're listening, feel free to reach out because I am passionate about these topics. So, but that's it. Thank you so much for that, Haley, uh, for your time and for all the conversation that we had today. Okay, this is one of my favorite things I have ever done. You're such a good interviewer. I appreciate this. So thank no you. Problem, thank, have you. A good week. thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.